Hello everyone, Crash here, this is RTA Motorsports. Today what we're gonna go over is my full review, thoughts and opinions of the McLaren GT3 style steering wheel from Fnatic. We've got a lot to talk about, here we go. Welcome to RTA Motorsports. All right, so first what I wanna go into is the design. What do I think of the design? This is kind of a major portion of this whole review because uh, this is the first GT3 specific steering wheel we had access to us, uh, specifically um, one that is a replica of a real GT3 steering wheel, not just an interpretation of one. It's kind of interesting. Fnatic actually had the actual CAD files from McLaren to obtain the overall shape and dimension of the wheel. Now they held a lot of things true and they had to change and adapt a lot of things because of the nature of what they are creating. They're creating a wheelbase for home simulation and video game use. So if you are a diehard fan that is looking for an exact replica, you're going to be a little upset here because uh, it's not an exact replica. Um, this is something that had to be adapted, like I said, for home simulation and video game use. So we do have uh, some things that are changed. For instance, this little screen here is not present in the GT3 um, steering wheel that you would find in the McLaren 650S uh, GT3 race car. Uh, instead, you would have a, uh, well, a third rotary encoder there. You would have three here total on the top line. Um, this screen, like I said, would not be present, but they have to have that screen there to calibrate and go through the settings for the wheel on the fly. It's kind of a part of their ecosystem. Um, so it's actually nice that they uh, were able to incorporate that there. Um, I don't necessarily miss that third encoder. Uh, down here, we do have the Xbox button which is not, uh, of course, something that you would find in the actual steering wheel for the car. And you do have the funky switch down here. Uh, the overall wheel uh, width is 30 centimeters, which is a very nice size. Uh, not of Fanatic's doing because the actual wheel itself is the same size, um, but I'm very appreciative that it is 30 centimeters. Uh, the buttons themselves, you're gonna notice the Xbox specific covers on there. Although uh, Fanatic was very kind to uh, offer two different things. And now a lot of people, they talk about the um, additional button covers that they offer with it. And we kind of go a little bit more in detail on this on the unboxing video. If you haven't seen our unboxing video, definitely check it out. It'll be in the description as well as at the end of the video. I'll link it there so that way you can see it. Um, kind of show you all the little accessories in there. But these are the, uh, the add-on button covers that they just give you for free or a part of the purchase, I should say. Um, and they have a whole bunch of different options. You have uh, windshield wipers, you have seat forward and back, um, horn, uh, turbo boost pressure, manual mode. You have, you have a lot of options here that you could kind of customize your wheel face if you would like to. But the other thing that is not really necessarily talked about all that often is if you take these button covers off, which they're on there pretty good, can't even pop them off by hand. Um, but if you take these off, these are actual colored buttons and they're all necessary, well, they're kind of different colors. I mean, you have red, gray, and orange on both sides and then this one down here is black. But if you uh, remove these button covers on here, they have colors, uh, solid colors, which you would find in the actual race car, they're just solid colors, um, which is neat because you could kind of capture that feel. And then another thing that they offered that is actually present in the regular race car is uh, button labels and you have the little stickers here which kind of closely resemble the actual button labels and you can label your buttons there, leave these off, just have the colors sticking out and then label them much like they are on the actual race car and that is probably what we're gonna end up doing. Um, you also have these beautiful buttons up top here. You have the N button and the P button. Uh, this is the neutral and this is on uh, most of the races that I have um, watched uh, they use this as the pit speed limiter button, um, which makes sense and uh, is of a nice placement. These buttons here, they do require some force to actuate them, which is actually neat to see because um, they look almost exactly like the ones that are in the race car. And if you watch a lot of the race car drivers, as they're leaving the pit lane, they're holding it like this. Instead of just actuating it with their thumb, which does take a lot of force, they actually take their hand off and actuate it like that. 
uh, be, just to show the amount of force that's involved. And it is a very firm button and it doesn't feel like one that's going to doubt. Actually, a lot of the buttons here, the rotary encoders, these little switches here, they are all, um, you can map all of these and they all feel very good quality. They feel like something you would find in a very nice button box. The rotary encoders have nice snaps to them. Everything feels very good. This one here is used for different modes. It's a mode switch, but it feels just as good as every other one. The funky switch, I actually like the design too because it does have a D-pad kind of built in and you could feel uh, you kind of fall into each cavity of the D-pad. It's not just a kind of wobbly stick. It, and it has some feel to it. You could push up, down, left, and right. And it is an actual D-pad you could push in and it's pretty solid. It has some firmness to it. It doesn't feel like it's going to uh, break easily at all. Now let's go to the back of it. And you do have this rocker style paddle shifter, which took a little bit to get used to. It's my first time ever owning a wheel that has the rocker style paddle shifter, uh, but it works and it's a very short throw with a very positive click. Uh, feels very good. You do have the pin up here for the uh, rocker style. Something that I did not notice in the actual race car um, was that center pin there, but it's fine. It's fine. It looks it looks nice um, And then these here is something I did not notice in the actual race car itself correct me if I'm wrong uh, But these here are specifically uh, mostly to my knowledge used in F1 and this would be the uh, dual clutch system uh, so that way you could push them both in uh, kind of set one to your clutch bite point that you would want. It's going to show on the screen what the bite point would be. You let out the one that you have all the way in and then you're kind of riding on your clutch bite point and then you slowly but kind of rapidly let this one out to kind of launch your car in a very controlled manner to limit wheel spin. It's almost like a manual launch control. Um, but it's not something that I've seen in the actual McLaren um, 650S GT3 steering wheel. All I saw was the paddles. Um, so it's kind of interesting that they incorporated that. It kind of makes it a little bit more of a versatile wheel. You can use it in F1 uh, specific situations too. And then what comes stock on it is the CSL Elite mounting solution. Now this mounting solution, uh, it's not the best looking solution at all. It's very simple. Uh, you do have this spring up here um, where you have to put the uh, fixator bolt through uh, to mount to the actual column. So you gotta kinda push that down a little bit, wrench that fixator bolt in, and then you're good to go. Um, I was a little bit worried about this producing some flex within the system, but we'll jump in the rig later, and I'll let you know what I feel there. Down here on the bottom, you have the built-in tool. Now it is in there kinda firm, but I did notice the more and more we used it, the more and more we've taken it out and put it back in, the easier it is. And uh, so at first, it kinda took two hands, but now I can do it with one. And on the inside of this, we'll put this wheel down for a second. Take this apart. You do have the Allen. And on the inside there, you do have the uh, fixator screw. And it has a nice little gunmetal finish to it. It's actually really nice. So you could just really put that on the Allen and stick that back in there. Make sure the F logo is facing up. And pop that right back in there for safekeeping. Overall, a very beautiful wheel. Uh, the carbon fiber on it obviously isn't real carbon fiber. It is like a wrap. It feels almost like a 3M wrap. It feels very high quality. Um, doesn't necessarily scream that it's fake, um, but it, it's nice. It doesn't feel like it's going to wear out or anything like that and doesn't really cheapen the look at all. The McLaren GT3, uh, you could kind of see the carbon fiber kind of going through it, almost like it was silk screened on. I'm not exactly sure if it was or not, uh, but it kind of adds to that immersion, makes you feel like maybe this is a tangible piece of carbon fiber, um, but it, it just makes it look really, really tangible, really pretty. Um, I was worried that being that it is of the CSL Elite line, um, having owning the CSW uh, base steering wheel, the BMW wheel, the old school, uh, the original, one of the original Fanatic wheels. Um, very heavy duty, built very well. It feels like it just came out of a race car directly. I was afraid that this was going to feel cheap because it's part of the CSL Elite line. And overall, just holding it in my hands, 
I, I could say that is not really founded. Yes, it does feel plasticky because the, the base material that it's made of is plastic, um, but it does feel pretty heavy for what it is. And the overall ergonomics of it, when you hold it in your hand, you could, you could feel that it is made for an adult sized uh, racer. Um, and it doesn't feel cheap at all. So next I'm gonna just quickly show you the installation process because there is some things you have to do with your wheelbase as well as the wheel before you can get it up and working right. If you just plug in the wheel to your wheelbase, uh, specifically the CSW uh, V2.5, the one that I have, I can't really test it with the Elite because I don't own the Elite wheelbase. But if you just plug in the wheel into that wheelbase and turn it on, it's just going to keep cycling over and over again. It's just gonna keep doing the spin back and forth calibration. You have to go through some steps to update firmwares for both the wheelbase, then this specific wheel, then you have to calibrate. And I'm gonna go through that right now. Here we go. All right, so we're gonna go over what you need to do to install this wheel on your wheelbase before you use it, because it's not gonna necessarily be plug and play straight out of the gate. There's gonna be a few things you're gonna to have to do. So first, you're gonna to go to downloads, you're gonna select your product, and our product is going to be McLaren GT3, that top one there. And then the easiest way is just go down here on the left side, you're gonna see the drivers. And over here, let's blow this up full screen. You're gonna select what driver is correct for your system. Um, again, they recommend to always use the highest um, firmware version, the, higher, the highest driver version, I should say, uh, which is now V311. Um, so we are on a 64-bit system, so we're gonna ins we'll install that one there. Run that. Next. Now we have already installed it, so you're just gonna go through the installation, just keep clicking next, going through the menus, and then once you're done, it's going to alert you to restart your computer. Once you do so, you're going to turn your wheelbase on. You're gonna to go to game controllers on your computer or you can click the uh, Fanatic Properties quick link just to get you here. Um, but you're gonna to go to your game controllers, go to properties. You're gonna get this prompt here. It's gonna say your Club Sport wheelbase V2.5 firmware is not the latest one. Do you wanna update now? So we're gonna hit yes. So now we are in update mode, so we're going to start the firmware updater. We're going to connect, it's going to do its thing. Then you're just going to go to flash firmware. So now the calibration warning is going to be up, but we're going to wait until we actually install uh, the McLaren GT3 wheel to, to do so. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove our BMW wheel. Now I already removed the set screw uh, that's in there. So essentially you just pull down on the quick release. Now this was a similar style quick release that you could get as an add-on for your uh, McLaren GT3 wheel. Uh, the one thing that's nice about this, as I previously stated, is the um, mounting hardware is already safely stored in here. Now this quick release is a little bit different on how it mounts because you have this like spring, uh, this metal spring here that you have to fold flat as you put in the set screw. Uh, you don't have any choice. You have to use the set screw on this. And let's make sure we got the hole in the correct location. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna push this in Make sure it's seated. We'll flip it upside down. Now you already have the screw attached to the Allen there, which is pretty nice. Stick it through the hole. There you go. And once you're done with it, you could either leave it out of the wheel or, as they intended, um, Make sure the F is in the correct position there. Slide it back in for safekeeping. There we go. And now we have the wheel attached. 
So now we have the GT3 wheel on, so we're gonna go back here and it's gonna say the CSL Elite Steering Wheel McLaren GT3 firmware is not the latest one. Do we wanna update? And yes, we're gonna go through that process again. So we're gonna click connect. And we're gonna flash. Just wait for that to complete. The wheel's gonna restart. Okay, so when you first start up the wheel, you're going to need to calibrate the wheel and you're gonna to need to make sure you have it in the right mode. You can see on our computer screen here, we do not have the wheel showing up at all. It automatically defaulted to Xbox One mode and you're gonna notice that by the start button here being green. Uh, so what you're gonna to wanna to do is push the uh, N button as well as the X at the same, or it's N and Y, I think it's N and, let's see here, I think it is N and Y, actually N and Y at the same time and you'll change the mode to the PC mode, you'll immediately see uh, red on the uh, start indicator button here on the wheelbase as well as the wheelbase will show up here. You'll go to properties and next you're going to need to calibrate your shifter if you um, are using your uh, H pattern shifter or anything like that. You're just going to want to calibrate it for that wheelbase so that way you always have access to it. Now to do the shifter calibration you're going to need to press the tuning menu and the P at the same time. So this little micro button here and P at the same time. And it's going to walk you through on this little display here in the center. It says gear N, press P. Make sure this is in the neutral position. Then for reverse, first gear, second gear. And you're just going to go through the menu, through each gear as it tells you. And then seventh gear, boom. And then you hit the tuning menu again. And on the computer screen, you should be able to see down on the bottom right, it is reading every gear that we put it in, including reverse. And you can see all the other buttons here lighting up. Um, now, everything there is good to go. So let's uh, jump into um, a title here and let's, let's get going here. All right, everyone, so we're inside the rig. I do have the motion going, so you're going to hear the rig going. I do want to test it in our normal working environment. That's how I have been driving it. It's how I feel comfortable, although we're not in VR right now, so you're going to notice my driving is going to be a little off. I'm not normally driving on a screen, and it is kind of throwing me off a little bit. Um, you're going to, in this camera here, hopefully you can see that display, and you can see what's going on as we're racing. Um, I do notice that we are in the 650S. You can clearly see that center uh, rotary encoder there uh, that is missing where we have this display. Also, you're gonna notice the buttons on the wheel because this is the wheel that this wheel is kind of based off of. You're gonna notice the colors. Now, in the race car, that's kind of the same way it is. They have the colors set up. If we remove these button faces, which you can do, uh, which we went over before, um, you'll see just solid colors. They're not the same colors, but you see solid colors and they also included uh, the stickers that you could place there to match what you see on the screen and what they actually do in the race car. So that's a pretty neat little uh, tip there if you want it to match the race car exactly. Just remove these button faces, although the colors won't match exactly, it's kind of the same feel. And then you can place the stickers to label what you want each to do. Or you could use the other button faces. You, you have your options, which is nice that they included that. They didn't have to at all. So when you're using this wheel, the first thing you're going to notice, which surprised the heck out of me, is you do feel a lot more little details through the force feedback, I wasn't expecting, um, I guess my BMW wheel being a heavier wheel, kind of dampens a lot of the feel that now comes through very clearly with this wheel, uh, which is nice, which is really nice, kind of livens it up, it's giving me a lot more information. The display on it is nice, and it's working right now. 
but when you're focused up here it's kind of useless as most of the wheels are uh, because you're not looking down at the wheel as you're racing uh, it, it is a nice touch though it's nice that it is there it's more it brings more of a premium feel and look to the product especially if you have other people watching you race I can really feel what this car is doing The CSL Elite mounting solution I thought was going to introduce a lot more, um, I don't know, wobble movement in the wheel on how it connects to the wheelbase, but we don't, we're not getting that, which is nice to experience. I thought for sure we were going to feel a lot of wobble, a lot of instability, uh, especially when I was looking at some of the images of, you know, how this wheel was constructed but I do got to say connected to the CSW uh, V2.5 as we do right now feels pretty darn sturdy it doesn't feel too bad now in an unrealistic environment if I just wrench on this wheel side to side I can get a little bit of motion out of it because it is plastic uh, but that's unrealistic as I'm driving it right now it feels really sturdy whoa we're hitting some buttons there accidentally uh, it feels like it's constructed really well, which is uh, really nice because, again, coming from a CSW uh, wheelbase and uh, the BMW wheel, which is a really robust wheel, I was really afraid this Elite um, product was going to feel like a lesser product, and that's not something I'm getting right now. It feels really good. The ergonomics are really good. Uh, the rubber side grips are feeling really good especially even in my rubber I mean even in my gloves here uh, the rubber doesn't feel like cheap rubber feels grippy feels grippy enough uh, I don't feel like my hands are slipping at all um, again when I race with this wheel or any wheel that has rubber grips uh, barehanded I start to get sweaty palms and uh, that's that's just something that happens with me and rubber wheels um, with gloves it feels really good I like how it's molded it's really ergonomic I could reach all the buttons really well it feels really robust and I like actually how light this wheel is because I'm feeling so much in this wheel it's actually pretty impressive Not really getting any vibration noises coming from the wheel. No nasty noises here or there. Um, everything is very quiet. I'm just getting the force feedback. Okay, so we're in the Lotus Exos 125, and I just want to try the, um, the clutch bite, or essentially almost the launch control feature. Uh, so pretty much as I understand the way that it works is you pull both paddles back you see it says hundred percent you let go of one paddle to a clutch bite point that you want uh, let's try we're gonna give this a few shots let's try 50 percent just for the heck of it so you let go of one paddle doesn't matter either one so 50 percent or whatever you choose pedal all the way down and you let go of the one that is all the way down Oh, we're in neutral. Okay. So, first gear, both paddles in. <laughs> we're learning, we're learning. All right. So, put one down to where you want it. Let's say 50% again. Pedal all the way down. Let go of the one that's full. And then slowly let go of the other one. It's pretty nice. 
think we can make it a little bit smoother though. Let's try All right, so this time, let's um, let's give 40% a try. So the idea of it is not to really have to modulate your gas pedal at all. It's all in your hands here. So first gear, push both pedals down. Let's bring this down to about 40%. Pedal all the way down. Let go of the one that's all the way in and slowly let go of the other one. You had some smoke on that one, but we still launched pretty darn quickly. Oh yeah. Let's give 50% another roll. Uh, we had a lot of smoke on that one, but we did get out of the hole very quickly. It does take some practice, um, but overall it's going to make you more of a consistent person when you're launching. So first gear, both paddles in. Let's go back to 50. Pedal in. Slowly let out the, the lesser paddle, whatever you're Whatever you're using to set your bite point, that's your second paddle you let out. And now when you let out very slowly. I think overall, I think overall, if you, if you get this down, this is going to make you more consistent out of the hole and faster out of the hole, hence why F1 uh, tends to use this sort of method here. Let's maybe try, try 45. So overall, how do I feel about this McLaren GT3 steering wheel? Well, to be honest with you, I'm actually quite impressed. I'm very surprised that the uh, CSL Elite mounting solution on the back didn't really present any noticeable flex within the system. Um, I was actually expecting there to be some flex, uh, definitely side to side flex um, while throwing the car around in turns. I didn't really notice any at all. It felt very sturdy, it felt like very robust. Um, specifically because the ergonomics of it, you kind of, when you grasp the wheel, you're, you kind of feel like you're twisting into the wheel. The, the grips are very, very nice as far as the ergonomics are concerned. You don't really feel like you're just grabbing a pole. You, you, the grips of it make you feel like you're really grabbing it. Um, so you do kind of put some force behind the wheel just naturally because of the wheel shape and the ergonomics of it and everything like that. I didn't really notice any flex at all. I was very happy about that. Now, if I just put the wheel on and I bend it back and forth, I get a little bit of flex, but that's unnatural. That's not really indicative of what happens in an actual racing scenario. That never happens. Um, but while racing, it performs really well. I enjoy being able to use my racing gloves with it without any sort of um, slipperiness really coming to play. Um, although when I race barehanded, uh, for me, my palms do get pretty sweaty and that is pretty annoying. But that happens to me on any steering wheel that has a rubber grip. Um, doesn't matter what it is, I, my hands just get sweaty on, on these rubber grips and it is what it is. As far as the thumb hole and the size of everything here, I feel that a person much larger than me, maybe you know 6'2", 6'3", um, is not gonna have any issues with feeling overcrowded or having issues with their hands fitting on the grips. The grips are actually pretty large in their size and very robust for a grown adult male. Uh, I feel that you shouldn't have any issues with this wheel at all. Um, it is a nice departure from the F1 wheel that they offer. Now their F1 wheel uh, is a lot more impressive looking in my uh, opinion because of the actual carbon fiber face on that option or the brushed aluminum. And then the Alcantara grips are a very nice touch, but it is a very small wheel. And for someone that doesn't race F1 often, if you don't race F1 often, you're not looking for a specific F1 wheel, this is a nice all arounder. You could use this for a lot of different disciplines. And then it has the actual launch control, uh, the manual launch control features, I call it, uh, the clutch bite point or the double clutch system. 
um, that a lot of the F1 cars use. So you could use this wheel very well in F1 style races, or you could really use that for any car. It doesn't matter, but if you want to keep it true, um, you could use this in F1. Um, and it, it just really becomes a great all around wheel. I re don't really see myself eager to put my BMW wheel back on unless I'm doing like oval racing or anything like that. I enjoy the lighter weight of it, um, really kind of bringing that force feedback through. The one thing that surprised me with that is it didn't feel cheap, it didn't feel hollow. I was kind of afraid of the plastic construction and that strong force feedback from the CSW V2.5 really making this feel hollow and almost like um, almost like it's dampened because of the plastic construction. But it didn't feel that way at all. It felt like I was grasping something that was very robust. I mean, if you told me that these were, I mean, for a very well they could be, but if you told me that there was metal grips in here and this whole thing was like a metal uh, construction on the inside, I would believe it because it. I felt everything coming from the wheelbase through my hands. Um, very well and very strong, very strong, very firm. So uh, overall, I'm very impressed with this wheel. If you are looking for a good all-arounder, if you do a lot of GT3 with the occasional F1, uh, like I do, I highly recommend this wheel. It comes with a lot of different things, comes with a lot of stickers. I mean, they really overloaded this thing with stickers, so that way you could really make it your own. If, Like I said, if you want to make it true to life to what this, uh, uh, this wheel came from you just pop these uh, faces off so that way you have the colors exposed and then put the labels on Underneath there and it'll look even closer to the wheel that it's modeled after um, But overall I am very impressed very happy with this wheel especially for the cost now They do offer for an extra hundred dollars on their website the uh, CSW um, quick release now I kind of wonder how this wheel is going to fare with their incoming podium series their direct drive uh, wheelbases. I, I kind of wonder if this is going to be um, a part of that, if it's going to be able to be used in that ecosystem because, well, let's face it, um, direct drive wheels are stronger. They do offer a lot more torque. So I kind of wonder how this is going to um, handle that increased torque, especially being that it's you know mostly constructed of plastic, especially within this mounting solution here. Um, I'm sure they already thought of that, and hopefully it is going to be compatible with those there. Um, I kind of wonder if they're going to mandate that you have the CSW uh, quick release adapter for that. I'm, I'm not sure if they can or not. Um, but for an extra $100, you could get the CSW quick release adapter. I'm not sure how that's going to make it feel. Um, I thought for sure I was going to want to order it uh, because I thought there was going to be noticeable flex within the system. I haven't really noticed any flex within the system. So I'm gonna do a little bit more research, see if uh, owners of that ad additional uh, quick release are, are saying that, yeah, there's so much more force feedback coming through, or yeah, it feels that much more stable. If, if it does, yeah, maybe I'll jump on it. But I'm very surprised by how the wheel is set up straight out of the gate. It, it feels great, it feels great, and I highly recommend it. So I'm Crash's RTA Motorsports. Hopefully you got some useful information out of this video. Definitely subscribe, hit that like button. We have just crossed over 1 million views um, on this channel. It's absolutely insane. I can't believe we crossed over the 1 million mark. Uh, hopefully we can bring up the subscribers. Definitely catch me on Instagram. I'm going to have that down in the description. I post a lot of video, a lot of images or you know the occasional videos of things that I'm just doing, car shows that we go to, funny pictures of my little fur babies or the uh, garage up uh, work vlogs that we've been uh, working on here. Uh, hopefully we get the work vlogs up soon but I've been posting updated pictures of my garage on there so definitely catch us on there if you want to see more of the behind the scenes of RTA Motorsports. So we'll see you all next time. Have a great day.